we don't ever talk about our energy. Let's just camp here for a second. I'm always tired. I have three kids under age six. Anything I can do to conserve energy, it doesn't matter what's happening downstairs. 9.30, I'm like, oh, okay, well, time for me to head up. See you tomorrow. and welcome to The Christy Wright Show. I'm so excited because today we are talking about managing your energy. We don't ever talk about that. Like, we don't ever have enough of it, but we never talk about how to manage it and maximize it. So today, we're gonna do just that. And then I'm actually going to unpack an article for you that I read recently where it talks about managing your energy might be even more important than managing your time. We're gonna talk about that as well. But first, let's talk about what it even means to manage your energy. Well, I gotta give you an example. The other day, I walked into work and I walked in the office and I've got you know my computer bag and all my stuff, my coffee, my water, and I'm just trying to get to my desk and someone says, Christy, you look tired. And I was like, really? Really? Because I have three kids under age six. I've been tired since 2014, y'all. Like, it feels like tired has become a way of life. And normally, I'm a really energetic person. But the reality is, our energy is finite. Whether you have kids or not, whether you have a crazy job or not, at some point, you're going to run out of energy. And that's why I want to talk about what it looks like to not only manage it, but even boost it. I'm gonna give you five specific things that you can do right now today, this week, that's going to boost your energy. Because here's what I've noticed. A lot of people spend their energy on things that aren't important to them. They waste their energy. They put energy into things that don't matter and then they don't have energy left over for the things that do. And I'm not just talking about time or money or your attention. I'm talking about the effort, the enthusiasm, you know, because let's be honest, Coffee can only do so much. At some point, we have to get smart about how we manage our energy. Now, I know some women, some people that, uh, let's say women, for example. I know some women that they put a lot of energy into going back behind their husband and redoing house chores. They want him to help, please help, so he helps. And he folds the towels, but he didn't do it right. No, he didn't. So they go back behind him and refold the towels or they go back behind him and reorganize the dishwasher. Have you done that? You have done that. I know you have done that. I know it's Tetris, and you think you are the queen of dishwasher Tetris, but that's a lot of energy for some dishes that are still gonna get clean, y'all. They're still gonna get clean. I know a lot of women that put all their energy into worrying themselves sick over who's gonna get the next rose or not get the rose on The Bachelorette. I know women that spend hours and hours making scrapbooks. Now, I'll tell you, None of those things are important to me. They're not wrong. They're just not important to me. Towels being folded a certain way, the dishwasher being loaded a certain way, though I may have done that once or twice. I've gotten over it. I'm recovering. Uh, Scrapbooking, the bachelorette, those are things that are just not important to me. So I don't put any of my energy there. None. But there are other areas that I put a lot of my energy to. Playing with my kids, getting on the floor, wrestling, scavenger hunts, walks around the park, uh, exercising, Stuff like this, getting to do work with you all and the the show, that stuff, I put a lot of energy to. I get really excited about because those things are important to me. So it's really important as we look at not only how we spend our time and our money and our attention, I want you to think about the types of things you're putting your energy into. What are the types of things that you are actually giving your effort, your enthusiasm, all of those things that you pour yourself into, what are those for you? Here's the good news, that regardless of if you are feeling drained and empty and needing some more coffee, or if you feel like you are overflowing and rested, probably unlikely, but maybe you're there, I wanna give you five specific things that you can do to boost your energy today. Like these are super practical, super tactical. You can start them right now. They will make a difference in your week. And this is real time because I will tell you, I've been doing these things specifically the last week and it has made a massive difference. I don't feel like I'm dragging throughout the day near as much anymore. I feel like I have control. I feel like my schedule is consistent and I feel more energetic. So let me give you these five things. Number one, set an earlier bedtime. 
I know, you heard that before, but you haven't done it. I didn't either. I've heard it a million times, but here's what was so eye-opening for me. It wasn't just going to bed earlier because that idea is a moving target. Like, what is earlier? Well, every night is a different time. Are Matt and I watching a show? Are we staying up talking? Are we out with friends? Are the kids being crazy and we can't get them down? Different things, different variables would affect my bedtime. So my bedtime varied anywhere from 8 o'clock on the nights that I'm exhausted to 11 o'clock if I'm staying up late for some reason. And so since it was this moving target, the amount of sleep that I got varied. The time that I woke up varied. How I felt when I woke up varied. And the energy that I had varied greatly. So I did something new. So simple. So, so simple. I just set a specific bedtime, 10 p.m. 10 p.m. was the bedtime I decided was right for me. And I even got more specific and I decided I was gonna head up to my bed from downstairs at 9.30 p.m. to begin to read. I'm always wanting to read personal development books and business books and that type of thing. So I thought 9.30, whatever I'm doing is gonna stop and I'm gonna head upstairs, I'm gonna read, take my contacts out, all of that for 30 minutes and wind down, not look at my phone, and go to bed at 10 p.m. That guarantees that I'm gonna get a set amount of sleep, which is going to obviously help my energy. So the number one way that you can affect your energy and boost your energy is to set a specific, consistent, earlier bedtime. That's number one. Now, number two is similar, because these go together. I want you to set a specific and earlier wake-up time. Now, this wake-up time should be in proportion to the bedtime, so you have a set amount of hours that you feel good about for sleep. You know what makes you feel rested. You know what makes you feel good. You're starting your day fresh. So for me, it's seven hours. I need to get seven hours of sleep to feel really, really good. So if I go up to my room at 9.30, my bedtime, I am asleep, lights out by 10 p.m., 5 a.m. is my new wake-up time. And y'all, let me tell you why this is so amazing. 5 a.m. is before my kids wake up. (laughs) Can I get an amen? If you can just wake up before your children. There is something holy about the hour before my children wake up, not just because I'm reading my Bible, but because I am alone. It's peace, it's quiet, and most importantly, I wake up as me. If you're a mom and all you ever wake up to is being mom, you're waking up to, I need milk, turn on blaze, he hit me, where's my clothes? You wake up frantic, reactive, frazzled. You wake up as a crazy, rushed, frantic mom. But if you wake up before that, you wake up as you. You have this precious time of peace and quiet. You can do whatever you want. Here's what else I love about 5 a.m. That's the right wake up time for me specifically. I know that my kids wake up around 6.15, and so I know I'm gonna get about an hour and 15 minutes before them, but it's also early enough to make sure I get quiet time where I can read my Bible, where I can pray. I can do about 20 minutes of yoga if I want to. I can also even work out if I want to during that time. I can fit in a run and have Bible time all before my kids wake up, in addition with having a cup of coffee that I can drink before it gets cold and has to be microwaved. So many wonderful things happen between 5 and 6.15 a.m., and I've done this every morning the last week, and y'all, it has changed my entire day. It has changed how I feel about myself, and it's definitely changed my energy. But I don't want you to just set an earlier wake-up time but still go to bed late. I want you to set that earlier bedtime that's consistent every night, and then with that, your second step is to set your earlier wake-up time, if you have kids before your kids wake up, where you can do whatever you want. You can read, you can pray, you can work out, you can do yoga, you can just be quiet. Those two things will transform not only how you experience your day, but they will definitely boost your energy. You have a consistent schedule, you know you're getting sleep, you have time alone, and you are fitting in the things that are most important to you, like reading personal development books at night or reading your Bible in the morning and working out. That creates a structure that makes you feel safe, in control, and helps you boost your energy. But I wanna give you three more things you can do that are super simple and practical to help you boost your energy. The third thing that you can do to help you boost your energy is to stay in your strengths. During the day, when you're going about the day, and I know you have tasks that that don't fall in your strengths, we all do, but as much as you can, align your to-do list and your calendar with your strengths, with your gifts and talents, the things that make you light up and come alive, because here's what I found. 
When you stay in your strengths and you work in your strengths, you you expend energy and effort in things that are your strengths, it actually gives you energy. It actually fills you back up. It's amazing how this works. Y'all, I can be speaking for three days straight at Business Boutique, and at the end of those three days, it's not that I'm not tired. Of course I'm tired. But it's that good kind of tired where I can't wait to wake up and do it all again. But if you ask me to fill out an Excel spreadsheet, like put data in, look at numbers, details, read some fine print, (laughs) I got five minutes and then I need a nap. It's exhausting. When you do things that you're not good at, that you don't enjoy, it drains your energy so fast. So as much as you can, spend your day, spend your time, spend your life, use your skills in things that are in your strengths. That's the third way to boost your energy. The fourth way is really simple as well. Move your body throughout the day. Before I come in the studio in here, I'm like, you know, doing some high kicks, doing some punches, trying to get my body moving to boost my energy, to be excited and enthusiastic on camera for you guys. Moving your body actually gives you energy. Even if you take a quick walk during your lunch break, you know, people think that you need energy to exercise, but it's the opposite. Exercise gives you energy. So move your body throughout the day to boost your energy. And the fifth and final simple practical thing you can do is to eat throughout the day. And I'll be honest, I'm terrible at this. Like I will look up, it's two o'clock, I don't have a watch on, but you know, pretend two o'clock and I haven't eaten all day. I rush out the door, I fly through lunch working on meetings or talking to people and I just get distracted and I just forget and then my energy absolutely plummets in the afternoon and I realize it's because I haven't eaten. So one of the things that really helps me is packing snacks ahead of time, packing snacks, granola bars, almonds, whatever, good healthy things in my computer bag that's gonna give me energy. Sure, you can eat a sugary snack and it feels good for a second, but then your energy drops. If you eat throughout the day, small snacks in addition with your meals, it's gonna keep your energy up. Y'all, if you do these five things, an earlier set bedtime that's consistent every night, an earlier set wake up time that's consistent every morning, regardless of what's going on, then you're gonna know how much sleep you're getting and it's gonna help your energy. You also want to stay in your strengths, move throughout the day, and eat consistently throughout the day. If you do these five things, I promise you, it will boost your energy immediately. When you do this, you're gonna have more energy for what is most important to you. And I know that that's your heart and that's your goal because those things matter the most. We're not gonna spend our energy wasting it over here, scrolling through social media, going behind our husband, fixing his towels, or wasting on things that don't matter. Instead, you can do things that boost your energy so you can put it towards what's most important to you. All right, y'all, I wanna spend a few minutes unpacking this article that I think is really interesting. Here's the title. Manage your energy, not your time. Have you ever thought of that? Like, how often do we talk about managing our time? I need more time, find more time, make more time, create more time, create more margin. We talk about our schedules and calendars and to-do lists and commitments, but man, we don't ever talk about our energy. Now, I wanna read you the beginning of this article. It's very long, and they go through several different things that you can do to change your energy and improve the amount of energy that you have, but I wanna read this example because I think uh, it really hits home with many of us, and it's very relatable. Here's how it starts. It says, Steve Warner is a highly respected 37-year-old partner at Ernst & Young, married with four young children. When we met him a year ago, he was working 12 to 14-hour days, felt perpetually exhausted, and found it difficult to fully engage with his family in the evenings, which left him feeling guilty and dissatisfied. Been there? Even if you're not a partner at Ernst & Young, man, that rings true. You're exhausted all the time, and then you feel guilty for not having the energy for your family at the end of the day. That rings true for me. He slept poorly, made no time to exercise, and seldom ate healthy meals, instead grabbing a bite to eat on the run or while working at his desk. Warner's experience is not uncommon. Most of us respond to rising demands in the workplace by putting in longer hours, which inevitably takes a toll on us physically, mentally, and emotionally. And then it goes on to say, the core problem with working longer hours is that time is a finite resource. Energy is a different story. And then it defines it, which I never knew this. It says, defined in physics as the capacity to work, that's your energy, the capacity to work. Energy comes from four main, uh, four main wellsprings in the human body, the body, the emotions, the mind, and the spirit. In each, 
energy can be systematically expanded and regularly renewed by establishing specific rituals with the goal of making them unconscious and automatic as quickly as possible. Y'all, this is fascinating to me. And what's so amazing about this is I found this article after I started my own rituals. So I shared with you that I had this aha moment that with a moving target for a bedtime and all these different variables that would affect my bedtime, then that of course affected the amount of sleep that I got, which of course affected how I started my day. It affected my wake up time that varied all over the map. It was incredibly inconsistent. Now, I don't know if you're like this, but I have a confession. I don't like rules. I hate rules, in fact. I understand that we need them to like keep people safe and have guidelines and guardrails. I get it, I get it. I just don't like them. Most of the time, when someone tells me there's a rule or a policy, I wanna break it just to show that they're not the boss of me. Like, I just don't like rules. Having a structured bedtime felt like a rule. It felt like this legalistic, no fun life. Having a set wake up time felt like the same thing. Like, it's just, oh, we've gotta have all this structure and you just could box me in. Don't box me in, I just wanna live my life. I'm a free spirit, I just wanna live my life. Don't tell me what to do. Here's what's interesting. Regardless of your personality style, regardless of if you love rules or you tend to buck the system, having structure makes us feel safe. Having structure makes us feel in control. Having structure creates predictability about our day, our week, and our life. Having structure reduces anxiety because you know what to expect. Having structure creates this sense of peace and calm. But here's what's amazing and brilliant about creating structure, this set bedtime, this set wake up time, these rituals and, and, and routines. Having structure takes the thinking out of it. Let's just camp here for a second, okay? I'm always tired. I have three kids under age six. Anything I can do to conserve energy, or as Donald Miller would talk about it, conserve calories. He says that we're wired for survival and our brain all day, every day is thinking of how it can conserve calories, how it can think less. So we see something and we immediately wanna, our brain is trying to label it, put it in a box and move it aside so we're not having to use, you know, use energy or burn calories to think of new things, to reinvent the wheel, to figure things out. So the more that you can create structure, which is predictable and consistent, it makes it easier on your brain. When you make it easier on your brain, you have more energy. Because every night you're not thinking, okay, well, what time do I need to go to bed? And what time is my, do I set my alarm tomorrow? What time should I wake up? What's my first meeting? What do the kids have? All that thinking, oh, I'm just tired, just thinking about it. It takes the thinking out of it. As a busy man or busy woman, anything in your life that you can automate, that you can put into place systems or structures that take the thinking out of it, make life so much easier on you. You know, I've been teaching on this for years in business. I tell women to batch their different activities. You know, get in the office and do all your social media at one time and do all your writing at one time and all your shipping at one time. The less that you're switching gears between activities makes you more efficient and takes the thinking out of it. You get really, really productive. I come in here in the studio and I shoot multiple episodes. I go to a coffee shop and I write lots of things at one time. When you get into that gear and stay in that gear, you're so productive and efficient. But when you're switching gears all the time, when you've got a moving target for a bedtime and a moving target for the wake up time and you don't know what's gonna happen between the wake up time and the bedtime, man, your brain is tired. It is working so hard to figure out where you are and what you're doing and what you're doing next in your environment. Is that true? Say yes. Yes, it's true. What's amazing is the last week that I have experienced this set bedtime of I head up at 9.30 p.m. to read a personal development book and I am asleep and lights out by 10 p.m., it doesn't make me feel boxed in. It doesn't make me feel like I've got all these rules that are owning me. It makes me feel in control. Because who set that bedtime? Me. I'm in control of it. It's just like my friend Rachel Cruz talks about a budget. People think a budget limits you. A budget gives you freedom. You set the budget. 
You can make the budget look like whatever you want to. You set your calendar. You can make it look like whatever you want to. You set your bedtime and your wake-up time. You can make them look like whatever you want to. But man, if you pick a consistent schedule and you put these structures in place, it takes the thinking out of it. So every single night of the last week, that I have experienced this. It doesn't matter what's happening downstairs. It doesn't matter if my husband is working on something with work or watching a great documentary or we're having a conversation. 9.30, I'm like, okay, well, time for me to head up. See you tomorrow. Good night. Sometimes we go up at the same time and sometimes we don't. It's exactly as this article says, it has the goal of making these habits, these rituals, as unconscious and automatic as quickly as possible. It creates structure, it creates safety, it creates a sense of control. And when you put these things in place, it boosts your energy. Not just because you have the exact amount of hours of sleep that you need and want, and not just because you're starting your day how you want to for once in your life, but because it boosts your energy. Your brain is working less hard to keep up with all the things going on in your day. You already have enough to worry about in a given day. Am I right? Yes. Your brain is already working really hard to keep up with your work, your business, your goals, your relationships, your to-do list that is ever-growing, and your crazy kids. Your brain is already working really, really hard. Don't give it things to work on that you don't have to. Set a bedtime. Set a wake-up time. Set your morning rituals, set your nighttime rituals, set these rituals throughout the day that create structure not to box you in and be the boss of you, You're the one that creates them. It gives you a sense of peace and freedom in that structure that creates real results in your life and in your energy. I love how it goes on to use the example that it started with, and it says, the rituals and behaviors that Warner established to better manage his energy transformed his life. He set an earlier bedtime and gave up drinking, which had disrupted his sleep. As a consequence, when he woke up, He felt more rested and more motivated to exercise, which he now does almost every morning. In less than two months, he's lost 15 pounds. After working out, he now sits down with his family for breakfast. Warner still puts in long hours on the job, but he renews himself regularly along the way. He leaves his desk for lunch and usually takes a morning and afternoon walk outside. When he arrives at home in the evening, he's more relaxed and better able to connect with his wife and his children. And I assume the result there is he feels less guilty. I did not read this article before I taught you what I did of what I've been doing this last week. But it is so affirming to know that the Harvard Harvard Business Review has actual research and stats on the results of these simple changes we can make. Changing your bedtime, changing your wake-up time, eating throughout the day, moving your body throughout the day, staying in your strengths, these simple things that you can do to not only boost your energy, but change your life. All right, y'all, I want to spend a few minutes diving into the truth of God's Word, and it's amazing how God gives us everything we need for every single aspect of our life if we just look for it in the truth of the Bible. Now, there's a verse I want to share with you today, and you've heard it one million times. Guaranteed you've heard it before, but I want to talk about it in light of this idea of our energy. This is Philippians 4.13. I can do everything through him who gives me strength. You know, the truth is we can do things to boost our energy and we can go to bed earlier and wake up earlier and have these rituals and we can do things that have a real result in our life. And we're still going to go through times that are hard. We're still going to go through seasons that are difficult and taxing and exhausting. I have been through them. I am I am sure that you've been through them as well. And when we're in those seasons, or even when we're in really good times, the number one source of our strength, the number one source of our renewal and our energy is God. I can do everything, it says, everything. Not some things, not easy things, not not seasons that are just easy or good where everything's going well for me. I can do everything through Him who gives me strength. That's right. Jesus gives you your strength. And through him, you can do everything. I can think of a few different seasons of my life that I would describe as kind of a wilderness where God took me through a valley. 
And in those seasons, I felt like I couldn't go on. I felt like every single day, things were getting worse and worse. I was having one problem after another. I felt like almost during those seasons that God was mad at me. And in those seasons, relying on my loving Father, relying on my faith and my relationship with Him is the only thing that got me through. Yes, we have a responsibility and an opportunity to manage our time, manage our money, manage our energy. We should steward those things well. But there are still gonna be times that are really, really hard. And I want you to know that the good news is that in those times, God will carry you through. God will give you strength. You can do all things. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. And so I wanna spend a few minutes asking you some questions to help you process this, to help you think through what does it mean for me to find my strength in my foundation of my relationship with my Father, in my foundation of my relationship with Jesus, that I can find a well of strength and energy there even when my own well has run dry, even when my own energy is zapped, even when I am exhausted and frustrated and absolutely at the end of my rope. God is enough. God will refuel you and re-energize you and renew you as you look to Him. That's the reason that we started everything there in the core of confidence. That's why we start with your spirit because everything starts there, even your energy. And when you feel like you're running out, He has more. God is infinite and He can give you strength to get through anything and everything. I love how I've heard several pastors say, I don't know where the quote came from, that God will never give you more than you can handle, but He absolutely will. And that's the whole point. He's gonna give you more than you can handle, so you know it's not all about you, and it's not all up to you, and it's not all on you. But when you lean on Him and look to Him, then you can get through it. Then together you handle it, because you can do all things through Him who gives me strength. All right, let's go ahead and get our journal and write down a few thoughts to help you process this. Your first question is this. I just simply want you to think about anything that feels too big right now. What feels too big for you to handle right now that you're going through? Write down all of those things that come to mind. And second, I want you to think about how have you been trying to get through that? How have you been trying to manage on your own? How have you been trying to pull yourself up by your bootstraps, rely on your own strength, and get through those hard things? How have you been trying to get through that? All right, here's your third question. How have you experienced God strengthen you in the past? Think back. I can think of several specific seasons that come to mind that were so hard and God got me through it. He truly did give me strength and energy when I had completely run dry. What about you? How have you experienced God strengthen you in the past? And lastly, how do you need God to show up and strengthen you right now? What area of your life feels overwhelming, feels exhausting, feels too big for you to handle? You feel like your strength has run out, your well has run dry. Where do you need God to show up and strengthen you right now? All right, I'm gonna pray for us as we wrap up. God, thank you that even though we are finite, you are infinite. 
We have limitations everywhere we look. Limited money, limited time, limited energy, but you're not limited in any way by anything. You're not limited by time or space or energy or calendars or bank accounts or bills. You're just not limited by anything. You know everything and you can do anything. And God, I pray right now for every single person that is watching and listening, I pray that you would give them a supernatural energy today, that you would renew them in a way that just doesn't even make sense. Where at the end of the day, they feel like, man, I had an awesome day. And the only conclusion they could come to at the end of this day is that you did that. Because we can do all things through Christ that strengthens us. God, you give us what we need when we need it. You get us through when we're not sure that we can get through. You make a way when it seems there is no way. You show us a way out when we feel painted in a corner. And God, you give us strength when we have none. You give us energy when we have none. When we're exhausted and defeated and worn out and discouraged, you renew us. You renew our hope. You renew our energy. You renew our faith. You renew us. God, thank you that you love us. Thank you that you love us enough to provide for us in really practical ways and also in the other ways that we need, like being our source of energy and strength. We love you, Lord. Amen. Thank you all so much for joining me as always. And I'll see you next week where we are talking about life balance. (laughs) Yeah, the hot topic that everyone wants to talk about. And I get to have an awesome conversation with the amazing Elizabeth Hasselbeck. Don't miss it. And I'll see you next week.